So our next speaker is Frank, Dr. Frank Marini. Uh, Dr. Marini is at the Wake Forest Institute for Regenerative Medicine. He's a professor there with an affiliation with the Department of Cancer Biology and Center on Diabetes, Obesity, and Metabolism at the Wake Forest uh, School of Medicine. He earned his PhD at the University of Texas MD Anderson Hospital in 1998. His expertise includes molecular biology and microscopic imaging. Now, why Frank is here is because when I uh, attended and was co-chair a few years ago over at the, uh, at the medical school, I, had a pres I attended a presentation of Frank, and it was one of the best presentations. It opened my eyes as to the amazing capacity of human cells and the advancements in microscopy, which um, are frankly mind-blowing. When you think about we're in the cell therapy world and the cell therapy business, to understand the power in the engine of cells, it's, it's a transformative experience. So uh, Frank's going to speak on the inside the cellular universe, revealing the wonders of extreme microscopy. This is being recorded for broadcast later as well, and we welcome all of you to take a seat in the front. Thank you. Good morning, and thank you all. Um, as mentioned, my name is Frank Marini. Uh, I'm a faculty member at Wake Forest Institute of Regenerative Medicine and also the Comprehensive Cancer Center at Baptist Hospital. And I'd like to thank the organizers, Dr. Siegel, uh, for inviting me to present at Public Day. And because it is Public Day, I essentially just wanted to kind of give everyone a super duper high level travel, trip, journey uh, through cells and through the body uh, using some technology that we've created, but also to try to um, have a little bit of understanding about some of the work that we do at the Regenerative Medicine Center. So I think everyone here understands that a picture is worth a thousand words and that we try to articulate um, science in a stream of data and a stream of images and that every image itself contains lots and lots of data. And what you're looking at here is uh, the inside of a human bladder um, and it's been stained with various antibodies that recognize the various proteins that line the lining of a bladder. And so why is this important? Well, this one actually is quite pretty. Uh, this one won the National Cancer Institute Image of the Year in uh, 2019. And this picture itself actually is quite informative because it shows the awakening of all the stem cells in the bladder, is what you see all that rainbow color in the upper left-hand side. That's the awakening of all the stem cells after this bladder has been regenerated. But my thoughts have been, you know, maybe we can build a better mousetrap. Maybe we can build a better, more informative picture. Microscopes today in laboratory are really good. They're very, very good. And I'm not going to deny the fact that microscopes have gotten better over the 25 years that I've been doing science. But they're still not to the point where we can get to the individual cell in its space and place in every tissue. So this is just an example of what we can do now with just traditional microscopes. One of the things that we've been doing in the science world, and particularly in cancer, is developing mice that have proteins in them that glow. These reporter proteins that glow, you can label them uh, with a cell type and then they can follow along. So when you look inside an animal that have these labeled cells, you can say that's a stem cell, or that's a stem cell, or that's a stem cell. So in uh, 2009, I received uh, a Dr. Barack, excuse me, a Barack Obama ARA award and developed what we call the rainbow stroma mouse and this rainbow stroma mouse has allowed us to really elucidate where the different stem cells in the body come from to develop tumors. And this is what the inside of this mouse looks like. The whole inside of the mouse is in color. And this is a microscope seeing this, and this is actually hundreds of individual pictures uh, stitched together electronically. 
And what you're seeing is his insides, and what, you, what I'd like you to see is the upper left-hand corner. The upper left-hand corner has these little itty-bitty yellow streaks, and the little itty-bitty itty -bitty, itty -bitty yellow streaks are surrounding an ovarian tumor. And we can zoom in real close, and we can see the yellow streaks are actually a type of stem cell that forms stroma. And as I'll talk to you during this presentation, stroma is equally as important as the cells. In fact, it is your structure. We also believe that the stroma contains as much, if not more, information on directing regeneration as do the stem cells themselves. But this mouse revealed many, many wonders to us over the time, and we were able to see things like this is the colon, uh, and these little green cells in the colon are, in fact, the colon stem cells, each under the crypts. Um, my lab played a trick on me and tried to make little emojis, it looks like. Okay, uh, good. Um, and then, as I mentioned, you can look through anywhere in, in these mice and find the population of stem cells that generate that tissue. And so why is this important? Well, now you can think about using this mouse to examine disease, to examine cancer, and to examine the contribution of all these cells that, that can happen in the development of, an, in this case, a mouse, but we'll actually try to expand this up to something bigger so you can kind of understand the translation to a, maybe potentially a human. Okay, so I showed you some images on a standard microscope, and these images are based on slides, and these slides are taken from an animal or a patient or a person, and you go to the doctor and they take a lump of tissue and they, they make a slide out of it, and the pathologist then reviews it essentially in two dimension. The big issue, of course, is that life and all of biology is in three dimension. And that third dimension, the spatial architecture, is really what drives regeneration. It also drives the development of tumors. And for those of you who've never had a chance to hear me speak, uh, back in 1996, uh, we postulated that tumors are wounds that never heal. And essentially stating that the tumor environment and a wound healing environment are essentially the same event, but the fact that tumors actually don't stop, whereas the wounding events stop. However, it's the exact same cells found in the wounding environment that are also perpetuating the tumors. So what if you could visualize these slides in 3Ds and make these dimensional stacks that today, using VR glasses, you could actually maybe assess. So here is just a simple representation. We take a piece of tissue, in this case maybe a tumor, and cut it into slices. And then someone would have to, um, someone would have to then take an image of the slide and then we would use a digital reconstruction and put all those together. And you can imagine a mouse would probably take, I don't know, 20 million slides. Probably, probably not very useful of our time. So the way to get around that actually is to get the microscope to see through the whole animal. And that, that's really what drove a lot of the work we're doing. And that's where a lot of this work today I'll talk to you about. As I mentioned, microscopes are great, but they have tremendous limits. And the limit is light. If you can't get light through tissue or the light to bounce back into the lens to collect the light, then you get no image. And in fact, it's this property called light scatter, which is the big problem with regular microscopes. And so in uh, 2015, we thought really hard about how we go about making light scatter disappear and how to get the light from a microscope to line up so it goes all the way through deep tissue. And what we created is a chemistry and a technology that we call INSIGHT. It stands for Index Matched Clear Imaging for Tissue Evaluation. It's patented and it's a chemistry that you actually soak your tissues in. It's a methodology on how it all works and then we developed a very computational heavy morphometric suite. The bottom line is this technology turns tissue into glass, makes tissue see-through and turns it into glass. But the whole design goal of being able to now have a microscope 
and specifically some of the more sophisticated microscopes, give us a full view of tissue in three dimension at depth. So just as a way of background, this is the insight clearing of tissue. This is actually a mouse, so super duper small tissues. But on the top row, you see what the tissues look like when we take them out from the animal. And when we put them in the insight product at the bottom, they turn see-through glass. In fact, it's not really glass like you can put it on a window. Uh, it turns into what is the equivalent of a pretty firm um, gummy bear. Probably the best way to describe it. And the interesting part is, is that this technology actually doesn't harm the tissue. So now you can use the tissue for anything else after you image it. What's also great is on the lower panel, in panel D, this technique allows us to see over 20 times greater than we could before with a standard microscope. Most microscopes can see on the order of microns, so thicknesses of human hairs. Uh, we're able to see now millimeters and centimeters of tissue now. <clears throat> okay, so quick thing. Methodology is a five, uh, assume a, a five-step process that includes also a bunch of data collection. We had to develop everything from the ground up. We have a data management system and an image analysis system, and that's great. Uh, but what you guys are really here for is to see things like this. So this is a 3D printed sheep's heart valve that was implanted into a sheep. And um, this has taken six months after the uh, sheep had the implantation. This work was done by Cody Williams. And we did insight on this and were able to turn that whole sheep heart valve see-through and therefore image the whole sheep heart valve for him to analyze the structure. And importantly, in regenerative medicine, what we want to know is, is the product we're making integrating, incorporating into the host organ, and does the host organ react to it as if it was a normal tissue? And the only way you can really do that is, in this case, take it out, survey it, ask is the structure, is it normal, does it look normal, and is the cells in the body all interacting in an appropriate way? We've stepped up even further, uh, working with um, uh, Vijay Garantala, who uh, we have a face and hand transplanter here at uh, W Firm, and he's been kind enough to give us some primate hands. And on the right hand side, you see a hand of a primate. And when I say hand, I mean literally they cut the hand off, so it's bone, cartilage, tendon, fat, muscle, fingernails, and put into the chemistry. And on the left hand side, you see we can make it totally see through. So we can now image this hand all the way down. You can see through bones, you can see through blood vessels. So now for the first time you have complete architecture of the hand and you can ask questions. In this case, this animal was going to transplant and it had an immune rejection against the transplant and we were looking for the immune cells in the hand. Okay, so let me just give you three case studies on how useful this might be. And more importantly, uh, what you can learn from this. And, and these are probably gonna be based movies this is actually the leg muscle uh, from a rat, a rat. It's a tibialis anterior. And what this technology does is essentially give you Google sky view. And then because it is a microscope, you can take the sky view, figure out where you are in the world of your tissue, and then zoom in on the tissue till you're at Google street view. So right now what you're looking at is all the individual nerves and fiber bundles that make a muscle. But importantly, we can take each one of those images. So that last movie I showed you is over five million individual images digitally glued together. And we can take each one of those images and zoom in at them at microscope level. So as you can see here, those cross striations are, are the nerves and the collagen bundles. You can see the tips of the myofibers. It gets to the point where right now we're kind of like halfway down the sky from Google Sky View but we can zoom in, so now we're getting at the street level. This is a close-up, and I can get even closer, I can get into Google Home View, or Google Art View, when they actually take the Google cameras inside the art museum, and you can see up close, and see the individual structures inside the muscle. Now remember, we started out with the whole muscle, and now I've zoomed in, till we see these repeating structures in a muscle, which allow your muscles to contract, these sarcomeres. And this is important now, because in people with things like multiple sclerosis and other muscle-wasting diseases, 
muscular dystrophy, the periodicity or the structure of these lines as you see them up there changes. And this is a way that you can detect and determine how a person is progressing uh, with muscular dystrophy by looking at the periodicity. As I mentioned, this is Google Street View. And for a muscle to work, you have to have a nerve, and here's the nerve. Nerves in blue, and those little red arrows are pointing to dots, which are the nerve muscle connections. What's useful is then we can zoom back out and take that whole tissue in three dimension and actually be like Star Trek and zoom through it. So here you are looking at the muscles. You can see the blood vessels inside. Those little white speckled dots are fat. The green is the muscle tissue. The blue are clouds of connective tissue. And what you're looking at, and I apologize for the high speedness of it, um, I'm short on time today, but essentially that's a whole muscle that has been imaged, a couple million tiles of information that now can be examined. Okay, let me show you the next one in bladder. So I showed you muscle, bladder. Bladder is also something we're quite interested in here. Dr. Atala has a whole, um, whole program on bladder, and this is an intact whole bladder. And this is the bladder that had surgery performed on it. Uh, we jokingly call this image the anglerfish, because it looks like an anglerfish upside down. And that's the whole, that's the whole uh, bladder. That, those blobs you see are pieces of fat. The blue is the connective tissue. The green is the smooth muscle. And we're going to zoom in up close. This, this bladder had surgery on it. And you can see the surgical stitch lines coming into view now in the front. And this has been a bladder that had cancer in it. The cancer was cut out and repaired. And we can see that repair line there. So why is that important? Well, because Dr. Atala is making these bladders in the laboratory for patients. And we want to be able to understand fully what goes on when these bladders get implanted and can they be used as some kind of stopgap for patients with cancers to transplant a piece of the, the new bladder back, the regenerated bladder back, and then how long it functions for. So one of the things we looked at is just the ability of these bladders um, to, uh, to grow and to um, uh, regenerate. Now, what's quite interesting, I have a few more minutes, what's quite interesting is um, mice and rats have the ability to grow their bladders back. So if a cat bites a mouse in the rear end and it loses its bladder, within a week it will grow back. And so we've used that as a model system for this in which we watched Essentially, we cut the bladder off, which is what you see on the right-hand side, and then over 30 days, we watched it grow back. <clears throat> and that's what you're going to see here. This is a, a regenerated bladder, and again, I apologize for the speediness, but what you're seeing now is the inside of the bladder, and then these are all the individual cells and muscles that make up the bladder. That's the entrance to the bladder where the pee would come out. <clears throat> And so why is this important? Because each one of those squares you're looking at is millions of tiles in depth. And each one of those can be examined at ultra high resolution because this is a microscope. And that's what we've done here. At, that, at different days, five days, four weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks, we did that same process. And we can look and follow each individual cell as it moves from its stem cell position at the base of the bladder to where it's going to be its final resting place to form a new skeletal muscle or a new uh, smooth muscle in the bladder. And that's what those arrows in the middle signify. We were able to follow in exquisite detail each cell as it contributes to the repair of these bladders. Um, I'm just going to show you the, the top here is a, a section of bladder is a section of bladder that we looked at, and this is from a, a normal animal, and on the bottom you can see what abnormal looks like. So this is what an abnormal looks like. All the muscles are twisted. And as you can imagine, if you have twisted muscles in your bladder, it probably doesn't work very well. Whereas in normal bladder, all the muscles line up in the appropriate way. <clears throat> okay, so last case study I'm gonna show you is what we're calling extracellular matrix. So, your body is full of cells, but the cells live on a scaffold, and the scaffold is composed of matrix. And the matrix is what sets up your structure. 
So every tissue and organ has a structure, it essentially looks like it, and then the cells populate the spaces in that structure. So we know that the structure, this matrix, is critically important to the, the production, not only of these regenerative tissues, but if they're going to incorporate into a body, they best look pretty comparable and identical to what's already there. <clears throat> so one of the things we've done is we've taken our insight technology and used it on a bladder, and what you're looking at is the extracellular matrix. The dark green stuff in the middle is the lining of the bladder. The space in the middle is the lumen of the bladder where the urine would be stored. And then here you're looking at all the connective tissue on the outside of the bladder. Now it appears in green and blue, and that's because this was actually built in mice that had colors in different populations of stem cells that repair bladders. And I'll show you that on the next slide. So here's that image I showed you, and again, this is a microscope, so each one of those images can be blown up in high resolution and detail to you can look at individual fibers and track fibers to look at its physiology, its impact, and its normalcy. <clears throat> again, using a similar method, here's that image I showed you. We can divide these into these various sections, and these various sections show us how the bladder is being repaired or regenerated. Here's those two colors I was telling you about. The green actually signifies the uh, collagen structures and the red are the smooth muscle actin positive cells that are making the collagens. So this is in fact the structure of a bladder and those are in fact the individual cells that make that structure. We can also use this method to measure how bad a tissue is, is decomposing or not working. We have database measurements to do that and we can measure metrics over time. That's pretty important and we can figure out how normal these regenerated tissues are in the body by comparing a normal animal to these animals that have been given the implants. This also works on things like cancer as well, where we're looking at the stroma, and this is actually an ovarian tumor. It's an ovarian tumor, it's in the center, and what you're going to see actually what we focus on are the blood vessels and the structural tissues. As I mentioned, tumors are wounds that never heal, and those same structural cells that help form the bladder are the same structural cells that help form the stroma of the ovarian cancer. And we're looking at those now in fine detail. Every time you see it move back and forth, and each one of those little circles is a cell in its position in three-dimensional space. The tumor's in the center, it's full of blood vessels, and the structure is surrounding it. See, the, those are all green blood vessels. Each little circular looking thing is a cell. Um, we also uh, looked at human pancreas, and this is actually a mathematical model called a finite element model. And let's see if this works. This is the biggest file I have. Uh, it's usually very unhappy. Um, but what you're looking at here in the blue are the fibers, and green is the pancreatic cells. Okay. Not going to work. Um, I will end this uh, on this. That is obviously looking at an eyeball, or it's looking at you. And we're going to take the eyeball and actually look at the, the vasculature and the structure. And what we've done is we've taken the eyeball and literally flown through the eyeball inside the blood vessels using the microscope. And what you're seeing is essentially the blood supply and the structure of the blood supply inside that eyeball. And so we've done this now with uh, monkey parts, um, pig parts, uh, sheep parts, uh, mouse parts, rats parts. And uh, the premise here and the hope here is that we can get moving and using the human tissue that we want to use uh, f from the patients. So again, here's the eyeball. And with that, I really appreciate your time on this. Obviously, it takes a huge team to do this. Uh, it takes a lot of money as well. And I want to thank Dr. Atala uh, at W Firm, all my collaborators, um, and Bernie for inviting me here. Thank you very much.